G'day everybody, and welcome to Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. This is my 1974 Honda CB450. Beautiful bike, I'm sure you'll all agree. But I haven't been able to ride it for about a year. Uh, it's had a bit of a problem. What I diagnosed originally, um, a high level diagnosis, was uh, that I'd had a blown head gasket. It was pumping smoke out the right hand side. Uh, these things have got a habit of pulling oil back through the head gasket if they do blow. The compression seemed to be pretty good in it, to be honest. Uh, but I haven't had a chance to get it get at it with all the work I was doing on basket case. <clears throat> so I lobbed it at a guy down at, at Margate in Tasmania. Give him a plug, Jim, uh, from Antisocial in Engineering. And he specialises in old bikes and um, was was kind enough to take it on. And I think he probably lived to regret that. So I gave him a gasket kit, I gave him a new timing chain, I said just, just make it happen and uh, get back to me. Turns out that when we dug into the motor there was a few more issues. Um, the rings were desegmented, so they'd, they'd fractured, the rings had fractured on both sides. The two compression rings on the right bank and one on the left. Right side had a burnt out valve, exhaust valve, and the left side valve was that sharp you could shave with it. So, new valves, new rings, clean up the bores, pistons, um, and also the starter clutch was completely destroyed itself. So we've disabled that, um, at least in the short term, so it's kickstart only at the moment, which I don't really mind anyway. But it runs like a pig, and it ran like a pig when I bought it, and uh, the, the issue is the points which sit behind here. It's got a dual point ignition system, dual coils. Honda, why didn't you just have one set of points one coil with dual leads, but anyway, we'll go. We won't uh, dwell on that. So um, I fiddled with it for ages, and and I actually got it running really well uh, prior to the strip down. But since then, it's 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 back to where it was, and they're horrible. You got to chase point gaps and chase chase timing positions, and one affects the other, and then you try and do the second set, and it's a nightmare. So what I'm hoping is that the contents of this box is going to fix it. Uh, so let's open the box and have a look. Right, so that's the contents of the packet. So what we've got here is um, this is the backing plate for the electronic points. So these these guys here send a pulse um, every time one of these magnets passes, and this guy goes on to the rotor shaft. And this guy bolts straight in where the old backing plate with the points on. And you'll see that when we when we go to fit it. Now this this set also comes with uh, an electronic advance unit. Now that is fantastic. The earlier versions did not have this. Um, they were they you still had to keep the old mechanical advance mechanism, which is. Um, problematic they they flog out and don't work properly and they're very um, they rely on centrifugal force this one relies on a lookup table so it it looks up your engine up it monitors your engine rpm and applies the correct amount of advance electronically so it, it delays or retard or advances according to the rpms which is magnificent now my father used to have a 1971 Triumph that he restored and it was points ignition and like me he wanted to get it running on points because it's kind of cool you want to you know you want to see prove to yourself that you can do it and stop shaking the camera and um, and he, it transformed his bike so I'm hoping that this one's really going to transform mine let's start tearing it apart the other thing the only other thing that we're going to need is a timing light and some basic hand tools let's get going I hope you haven't used too much gasket goo here, Jim. Ah, beautiful. Points exposed. And now, I'll have to remove that gear lever. It's going to be in the way. 
we need an oil catch pan because there is a, a little nozzle in there that sprays a mist of oil onto the alternator to keep it cool and um, it will leak it'll accumulate oil in the in the bottom there the other thing is when you're doing the timing you need to put some sort of a screen up because it will spray um, oil onto your onto your pants etc while you're trying to do it right, let's grab a 10 mil spanner and remove that gear lever Do these few jobs while I'm waiting for the fuel tank to drain. Because I've got to pull the fuel tank off for clear access. I have a center pop on my gear lever and a corresponding one on the on the shaft, so it always goes back where it came from. spoke of. Careful not to break that gasket because we need to reuse it. Right. So now we have access to our alternator for the timing and we have access to our points. Now we're not going to be needing these points so they can all come out of there, but I'll just wait until the fuel tank's finished draining so I can get it out of the way. Okay, now the fuel tank's out of the way, we can uh, we can get to all this nonsense now. So we need to remove the existing points. Thusly. like a sock that goes the inside of this bloody wire and it's preventing me from getting it getting it out so let's get vicious with it and cut them off actually no we won't do that let's cut the sock off all right points gone Grommet back in. Now we need to remove these are the mechanical weights that advance the timing or retard the timing depending on RPMs. You can see this roller here moving. We need to remove all this retaining bolt. Slide him off. Oh, that's it there. As it speeds up, these these weights come out and uh, they rotate the the timing. Give that a quick clean and start assembly. This is harder than it looks. If this is the hardest part, we'll be laughing. Everyone I've spoken to that's got or had experience with the, these aftermarket electronic ignitions just swears by them. It's, uh, you hear terms like set and forget, never have to touch them again. And all of that is good. Because unless you, I mean, I like tinkering on bikes, don't get me wrong, but I also want to enjoy them. Running through. Just gotta be patient so you don't I'll actually put a bit of lube on there. A bit of the silicon lube. Ah, that's a bad. Fits beautifully. It's nicely good quality aluminium back plate. Looks like it's laser cut. Yeah, he doesn't give a. Doesn't these do not come with instructions. However, online on the 
CB450 ignition, electronic ignition uh, website, which I'll place a link to in the comments. Um, he does give very good, uh, very detailed instructions online as to how to fit them, but I've had a quick read and I reckon that I can get this sorted. I did take the liberty of drawing his wiring diagram. Right, it's gravy. So the idea is that you are meant to, um, so the idea is you're meant to just sort of line this up approximately and it'll be in a position where it will start and then from there we make our adjustments. Hopefully we won't have to make too many. So let's um, get the rotor on and, and uh, start thinking about mounting that ignition unit and uh, wiring all this up. Uh, a little recess in the back here that it's meant to marry up with the tang on the shaft and you can sort of turn it and push it and feel it go in. I presume we don't want these wires rubbing on it. I'll have to have a look at that. The original retaining bolt is retained, pardon the pun. Let's use a socket because it's a bit shallow. Sid Chrome, you can hand a man a grand a spanner. Let's sort of snap that bolt off in there. Lovely. Right. So we've got a little bit of, bit of room to move there. Wires. Put them back in and out of the way a bit. Right, that's all clear. Yes, I might put a little cable tie on that. Just to be pedantic. Ignore the red. Oh, it's the only colour I've got in this size cable tie. Yes, I think that's a better idea. Lovely. So, now yeah, working out where to mount this guy. We don't need it interfering with the tank or anything like that. Clearly mark sensor and coil. So that side goes to the coils, this side goes to the sensors. Now, Probably get away with mounting it up here somewhere. A little cable tie it to the frame right there might be the geo. I think that's probably a pretty good spot for it. Right, I've had a bit of a look at this and I think that this is probably as good a location as any. Um, want to make sure that you're not going to interfere with the fuel tank etc so I'll pop a couple of cable ties on to secure it into place okay so as I mentioned before I drew sketched out the wiring diagram uh, that's on the CB450 electronic ignition website alrighty so these are the wires coming out of the out of the out of the, uh, the sensors, and these are the wires going to the coils. So we'll tuck them out of the way, and these have to go into that. So what we will end up with, according to Pemco Pete's drawing, is the two blacks tied together, the two reds tied together, and then the two greens will be going to either the white or the green wire on here so I'm going to fit um, some small plugs so I've got some non insulated terminals I always think they're better than the insulated terminals so I've got these little guys I'm going to fit them on I'll do that right now okay 
Okay, hey presto Brian, put the corresponding plugs on here. Okay, so they're nice and firm. Now we can slide that heat shrink up over the over the tails. Like so. Because we don't want them to come into contact with the frame or anything else for that matter. And then we shrink them down. Then all we have to do is plug black to black. Red to red. Now this is where the fun starts. Alright, so I've fitted two bullet head um, terminals. They're also non-insulated ones and I fitted them in exactly the same fashion as the as the um, the ones from the sensors and I've also taped these up so I've taped them individually and then taped them in together as a group so now green to white and white to yellow so sorry green to uh, yellow that's this guy and the white one goes into the blue now all we got to do is provide power underneath. So this is the black and white wire which is the power feed uh, to the coils. I've unplugged it from, from this uh, plug here. I'm going to take this bullet off the end of it and I will secure the red wire and put a new bullet onto the end. And that'll be that one taken care of. Then I'll just put a, a loop terminal on the black wire and bolt it straight to this bolt here where the ignition mounts to the frame and that'll be a satisfactory earth and I think then we're ready to start it and do the timing so let's get on with that so the only terminal I could find that would fit the bolt that I had at home was an insulated terminal I'm going to squeeze him on yep nice and firm and you can go on there sorted red wires done just need to plug him now into the correct yes that's the power supply plug so I can go into there Like so, we are now wired. I'll just tidy this up and cable tie it all out of the way and we can start it up and try it. Right, the theory now, fuel tank's back on. Theory is it should fire straight up. Uh, with a bit of luck it will, and then if it does, we can start looking at the timing. epic fail the battery in the camera went flat other than that happy days so we missed out on all the timing um, but I didn't have to do much to be honest it started very easily as you saw um, I had to I brought the idle down a little bit it, the, the timing was uh, advanced somewhat I just turned the plate brought the timing back into where it needed to be checked that it was getting um, full advance at, at, at uh, about 2000 rpm and then buttoned it up and away I went. The other side was perfect, spot on. So Pam, K, Pete, happy days, good work. Uh, so yeah, thoroughly recommend it. The symptoms that I was having was the bike wouldn't pull the skin off a custard uh, to, before. If you were on a flat bit of ground or slightly downhill, you could maintain speed and get it, get it up to speed, but it struggled. Second it saw a hill, it would just die in the ass. But now, strong as, it pulls like a bull in the springtime. So. I'm really happy. Um, went for a good half hour ride and settled it all, see that it was all settled in and it just performed perfectly. So 
thoroughly recommend it. Get rid of these old point systems. Get rid of this archaic old crap and uh, and get yourself an electronic ignition because it, it makes a completely different bike out of it. It's like a brand new machine. So super happy. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and uh, I'll be back with more and we're going to do some, uh, some fun stuff with the little CB now that it's up and about. See you later.